for this uh, irrelevant discussion. So let's start our. No, no, it's okay. Okay, it's great. Okay, uh, we are uh, going to start our listening lessons today, and uh, today's lecture will be primarily it would be uh, kind of uh, uh, an introductory lesson only, right? Okay. Uh, before I start, I, I want to give you an overview of, of uh, listing test. Actually, listing test is your first test test that uh, you know you face uh, on the exam day, right? Uh, you are, uh, first of all, you will enter the examination hall and then you know you will get receive some instructions, the standard examination hall instructions, and then it will be followed by uh, you know a, a listing test. After the listing test, you you know uh, your reading test will start, and then at the end, uh, it will uh, you know it will be the writing test that will come at the end. So <clears throat> now this is our first okay. test, but we are learning it. You know we are studying it at uh, at the last. So, anyways, listing test has got four sections. We know that, right? I hope you know that. If you don't know, so know it now. There are four sections, okay. and there are. 40 questions in total there are 40 questions right okay then every section has got every section has got 10 questions okay. clear yes. okay then uh, like like reading test the difficulty level you know keep increasing uh, with 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 every section that means section 1 uh, would be the easiest section, right? Okay. I'm just typing it because uh, I want you guys to take a picture if you want, easiest one, and section, like, you know, let me complete it and then towards the end you can take a picture. And section four is the most difficult one. Okay. Fair? Yes. Okay. Then, uh, you know, a recording is played and you have to uh, answer your questions while listening to the recording. Okay. okay. Recording will be not be repeated, and uh, you will just keep answering your, uh, you know, uh, all the questions while listening, and uh, you know, uh, on a booklet. Actually, you are given a booklet, question booklet, and uh, you will write your answers on the booklet, right? This recording will continue for, for generally about, like you can say, 28 to uh, 32 minutes, right? And then you will be given 10 minutes, 10 minutes to transfer your answers, uh, your answers from the question booklet to the answer sheet. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this was journal, uh, a journal overview. For the time being, I only want you guys to remember this thing that there are four sections because I'm going to give you uh, some useful information about these sections, and that you should know. After some practice, obviously you will come to know. Uh, but but if you you know know the detail and and the differences between the sections. These are really going to help. Right. I'm just now you you can pay attention. You know, basics are over. Uh, although you must be knowing uh, about these details as well, but I want to present them in a slightly different way, and uh, which which will be you know helpful to you. I hope. Section two, and then section three, and then finally. Three. Now, what are the differences and what are the similarities? If you know the differences and similarities, you can predict the type of questions that you are going to face and you can predict your answers sometime as well. So what are the sections? Number one, there is there are number of speakers. That, that is the main thing, right? How many speakers will be there? They will be talking. So number of uh, speakers, I'm just writing it here as speakers. In section one, there are two speakers, right? In section one, there are two speakers who will be talking with each other. Clear? Abdurrahman, because it is new for you, right? Section two has got only one speaker. Section three has got somewhere three to four. 
and section one has got one speaker again. Okay. Now let me give you some examples. Like here, you may hear a conversation between uh, a traveling agent and a passenger who, who wants to book some flights. Okay. Okay, like you, you can talk to any travel agent and you can call him, well, I, I, I need to go to Somalia next month and, you know, uh, can you tell me different packages? So this, okay. this uh, you know, that, that travel agent will give you some information. He will or she will ask some information from you you know and, and and during this discussion you will be sharing your information and most of your questions will be based on that information like in this particular case you may face a, a question like uh, uh, okay w at what date abdurrahman wants to leave okay and then uh, the other question might be uh, which three different packages uh, uh, or were offered by the travel agent. Which was the cheapest package? What was the cost of uh, family package? And so on. You see, okay. this, these, these type of questions, uh, to answer these type of questions, you need to listen to the information which, uh, you know, uh, those uh, two, two people who are conversating with each other, they are sharing with each other. Okay? okay. In section two, there will be only one speaker talking on a particular topic. This topic is generally about, uh, uh, you know, uh, our daily journal life. Like uh, it can be uh, some, something like a guest on, the, on, on radio. And that guest is a, a kind of specialist uh, about pet keeping. Okay. okay. And, and, you know, he is guiding uh, his audience uh, about uh, different tips on the pet keeping. Got it. Okay. So this is a general topic about our general life. Sometimes what happens that an other person, he or she introduces our speaker, like he or she can come on stage or maybe on radio or something and say that today we have uh, with us uh, a very renowned, uh, you know, expert of pet keeping, Mr. Joseph. And then, okay. you know, he or she will go away. And then rest of the talk will be delivered by that single person. Okay. Okay. So that is section two. Then section three. And this, uh, like, it, it, it generally revolves around the uh, academic, uh, you know, background. Like, there are three students, and they are discussing an assignment, or they are discussing a presentation that they have to share with, uh, or that they have to show to their tutor. Okay. Right? So they may, one, one of the, uh, you know, students may say that, well, I think this uh, presentation is good enough. And others say, I think it's uh, a lengthier um, and I, we need to, you know, uh, cut it down, cut it short, or we need to, you know, remove extra information. And the third student may say, no, I think in my opinion, it's, uh, it's, uh, we need to add something more. So after the discussion, they will agree on one point. Okay. okay, so this is kind of, uh, you know, the nature of section three. In section four, uh, it is generally an academic related single speakers talk. Academic related, like uh, there might be something, a university professor de delivering a lecture on, on uh, animals and their behaviors or something. Okay. okay, so the focus of this, this section four's talk will be uh, academic talk. But, you know, by academic, we don't mean that it will be related to some specific, you know, field. And you can't answer the questions if you don't know that about that field. No, it will be journal, but its nature will be academic. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so number of speakers are clear then. Now let me uh, focus of talk, you may say. For section one, it is journal life, okay? Day-to-day -day affairs. Like I gave you an example, uh, a travel agent and, and uh, you know, a passenger, a hotel receptionist and a guest, okay? 
a police station and uh, you know an, an applicant who is going to uh, you know write a report uh, for him or her so journal life then section two in section two uh, i told you again the topic is journal life right the day-to-day -day life in a native and here the nature is academic and here again the nature is academic okay. Fine. then what is the focus of the questions questions mm -hmm. in section one most of the questions will based on the uh, you know specific facts figures sorry let me do it go down then uh, 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 facts and then you know uh, dates prices okay rates and so on so all these figures are you can say they are based on some specific rates some facts okay here again the the discussion would be same like question will be most of the time would be same i will show you some examples and uh, then we will keep relating this information okay again the same thing dates and prices and you know rates but here the questions will be in section three question will be Okay, Amjad, you can unmute and you can uh, shoot your answer. Uh, shoot your question, please. You okay, raised your hand. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, I want to ask that uh, uh, because you are uh, telling just about the uh, first and second section. Mm -hmm. From uh, this part, I have just uh, clicked a question that uh, in I, I found uh, that we used to write like uh, five o'clock, nine a.m. something. Uh, uh -huh. Sorry. Like 9 a.m. timing or five kilometers. Uh -huh. and like uh, you, you know that we are given the uh, uh, units. Uh, like task that you can write uh, words like no more than two words or one mm -hmm. word and or a number yeah. Yeah. like that. So if you can just brief uh, in a in two three sentences that uh, writing five kilometers as a full word this uh, this implies uh, one word and a one number, right? Okay. But if I write five a.m. is it uh, uh, accurate no, to write or not? If Yes. Okay. I will t talk about these units, right? Sure. <laughs> I'll talk about these units and uh, sometimes units are already mentioned in the question. The question can be, uh, for example, uh, the question, the time bus leaves. Okay. okay. And then question is written like AM. Now you don't have to write that AM with it. Right. But if it's, right. it's not there, then obviously you have to write. But again, okay. no, no, and I will talk on this like uh, in detail. Uh, generally, if, if I talk about date, so if I write to, uh, this is uh, date, okay, and then uh, this is the month, and then this is year, let's say. So this will be counted as one word. This whole thing will be counted as one word. Okay. Got it? So we'll talk on this. We'll talk on this. Sure, sir. Thanks. So, uh, question specific facts, dates, prices, and here in section three and section four, questions will be primarily uh, based on opinions, attitudes, decisions, okay, conclusions, and so on. Here, the questions will not ask you the uh, the dates and uh, what thing. So that means these questions are going to be more tricky. Mm. Okay, and section four is a mix of, of all these things. Okay. Fine. So if you see these two sections, the first two sections are very easy, uh, you know, uh, and you can get out of 20 here, you can get 19 or sometimes 20 as well. Okay. In section three, you are going to lose marks. This is very common. Uh, that people, you know, uh, they, they lose marks here, particularly if there is a multiple choice question. Multiple choice questions is a big fear for many students. Okay. <clears throat> now, again, if now if you see the similarities in, uh, no, one more thing. 
the discussion. Okay. In section one, in section one, mm -hmm. there will be an exchange of information. Okay. okay. An exchange of information and based on that, inf uh, you know, exchange on information, some decisions will be taken. Okay. For example, uh, Abdurrahman is calling uh, um, an IELTS trainer, Ijaz Mihas, and he wants to know the pa about different packages. Okay. So Abdurrahman would be calling me and uh, you know, he would ask, uh, well, sir, I, I want to appear in the IELTS test. Uh, can you tell me something about your packages? In return, I will ask some question and I'll ask you, okay, which module you want to appear into? Uh, do you want uh, academic module or journal training module? Okay. And you would tell me, okay, sir, academic or journal training, whatever, let's say academic. And then I would say, okay, uh, uh, can you tell me your desired band? And you would say, okay, sir, seven each at least. Okay, fine. So how much time do you have, Abdurrahman? And then, you know, Abdurrahman will tell me some time. So your questions would be based on, well, Abdurrahman, uh, Abdurrahman's desired band is this. Okay. okay, this is a question. So this is based on facts and information, you see? Yeah. Then I would offer you two packages, three packages, and you would say, well, sir, what is this guarantee package you are talking about? And what's the difference yeah. between these two? Then I'll tell you the differences. And based on this exchange of information, you will take a decision that I want to avail so-and-so package. Okay. You got it? <coughs> a yeah. similar, now, there's a difference between, now let's, let's move on to section three. <coughs> In section three, there will be another discussion. There will be three, four people. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> they will be talking uh, to each other. And I gave you an example. Let's say there are three students and they want to talk or discuss or finalize their, their presentation before going to tutor. And, you know, in that, there is a disagreement. In the beginning, generally, there is a disagreement. Okay. Okay. Like one, someone is saying that I think the length of the presentation is pretty fine. Other is saying, no, I think we need to add more. Third is saying, well, I think uh, uh, we need to cut it down. And uh, finally, they will go to the tutor. Then tutor would ask something and, you know, he may uh, appreciate them or he may, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can say he may scold them. Uh, that, oh, what the hell you have done with that? Okay. But, uh, you know, at the end, after this disagreement, again, there will be a decision taken. Okay. But this time, this decision is more towards, you can say, an agreement would be reached. Okay. You see? In both the cases, if you compare these two things, in first, there's only exchange of information and there are some suggestions or proposals. There's no disagreement as such. Okay. One person is proposing, okay, you can avail this package, this package or that package. And other per person is taking decision, but this is all decisions are taken based on the exchange of information. In section three, initially there's a disagreement, you know, then there are arguments. And then after, uh, you know, arguments and discussion, an agreement would be reached. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, now with this backdrop, you have an overall idea. Let's let's start our regular lessons. Uh oh, and I deleted it. <laughs> right. I wanted you. To... Okay, you took it. Okay, that's great. That's good. <laughs> now, what is the purpose of uh, this uh, listening test? And 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 you know. In this, remember one thing that you would be judged upon your understanding of the main ideas as well as specific factual information. I hope now you know that. The specific factual, factual information will be tested in section one and two. And main ideas and you know opinions and attitudes would be uh, checked in, in section three and four. 
opinions, attitude, purpose of the speaker, and then follow the development of an argument. And this is generally done in again section three and section four. Okay. <coughs> I'll show you multiple examples um, and, and those examples will make you really comfortable. I've already told you that uh, you have 40 minutes uh, in that approximately 30 minutes of audio recording and then 10 minutes to transfer your answers from your question booklet to your answer sheet. Okay. You are provided with a question booklet and while listening, you know, all your questions are written on the question booklet. So, you know, it is not possible for you that while listening, you, you are able to transfer the answer to the answer sheet. Okay. If you will try to do it, you, will, you are going to lose marks. So what we do, we just write, keep writing our answers onto the, uh, on the question booklet. Okay. And at the end of the, you know, test, at the end of the recording, then they give you 10 minutes to transfer your answers. In IELTS reading test, you are not given any extra time to transfer your answers. But in listening test, you are given 10 extra minutes. Okay. Now, uh, let's, let's uh, have a look on this answer sheet. I hope you have already seen it. Um, this is very similar to the writing test. Okay, you have to write your answers here. Okay. Anything written on the question booklet will not be marked. You will get score based on this answer sheet. So, you know, you'll write your center number here. And, and uh, I hope you know the uh, method like test date. Let's say it is first sorry zero one sorry uh, let's say this is a one uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil it i'm sorry let's say the date is 23 or 20 this is not you will fill this 23 mm -hmm. and the month is let's say uh, mm, 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 mm. okay make it three and then you know year and so on okay zero three the month is okay. zero three, and then year is let now eighteen, so you will fill it like that, and so on. Same goes for okay. now. This is this is for test date. Sorry, that was for number. Test date is here, okay, and and so on. So you must be familiar with this filling technique. That's it. Okay. So now let me move to the next slide. Question paper. A question paper will be uh, in the form of a booklet. I have talked about it. <clears throat> These are the standard instructions which are given, uh, you know, outside the uh, question booklet on the front page of the question booklet. Here you have to write your name and here you have to write your candidate number. Okay. 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 Now. This one is for booklet. Hmm? Sorry? Is a, is a book, is a, yeah, this bit is. Yeah, this, is a, this page okay. was for, this was the front page of question booklet. You know, you will okay. open it and you will find your questions inside. Okay. This is the cover page or the front page. Mm. And that you have got okay. all the instructions. Okay. You can just go through these yes. instructions because in exam, you know, uh, many people waste time in it. So you should be familiar okay. with these kind of instructions. Yes. Yes. Right. So now uh, let's move on to the listening sections. I have already told you there will be four questions, uh, four sections. Uh, in, in your listing test and uh, you will have 40 questions to answer and there that means there are 10 questions in each section all questions okay. are equally imp important that means one mark for one question so okay. <laughs> to get one mark for each each section is a little more difficult than the one before that means difficulty level will keep increasing okay okay then sorry now let's let's have some examples of each of the sections okay. in section there will be a conversation between two people in everyday social situation i have already told you okay, okay. okay. answer questions on, on on your comprehension for example there would be a conversation between an accommodation uh, a conversation in an accommodation agency or a hotel where there's a customer and there's a uh, you know, a desk, um, a front desk uh, receptionist or something. Okay. Two colleagues in an office, a customer and a staff member in a department store. The conversation might be face to face or on telephone. Claire? Okay. Yeah. okay. Now, let's uh, have, have, you know, you may not be able to listen to these recordings very clearly, but 
this is kind of you know uh, section one's question okay. right no more than three words and or a number for each answer now this is a shipping agency and this is a customer quotation form for example abdurrahman works in this agency and i have to uh, you know ship a few boxes uh, overseas so i would call abdurrahman and abdurrahman would say okay sir i can uh, you know uh, just tell you uh, or uh, give you that package but before that i need to uh, fill a uh, small form can you tell me your name please i would say okay jacob macquery you would you say sir can you spell this macquery so i would say m k e r e so while listening to the recording you will write this the spelling okay similarly i would say okay sir at what address you want to send it i would say west hall college and you would just say can you spell this west hall so okay. you will write it here then town this one then postcode i would you know uh, narrate the postcode and you would write it you know while listening so clothes what what kind of things i want to send some books there are some toys in this box this is the, these are the measurements of the box written here that i want to send abroad clear okay. so now i will play the rec audio recording so just have a uh, have a you know an idea of, of this recording okay you will hear a telephone conversation between a customer and an agent at a company which ships large boxes overseas. Good morning, Packham's shipping agents. Can I help you? Oh yes, I'm ringing to make inquiries about sending a large box, uh, a container back home to Kenya from the UK. Yes, of course. Would you like me to try and find some quotations for you? Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Well, first of all, I need a few details from you. Fine. Can I take your name? It's Jacob M. Kerry. Can you spell your surname, please? Yes, it's M. K. E. R. E. Is that M for mother? Yes. Thank you. And you say that you will be sending the box to Kenya? That's right. And where would you like the box picked up from? From college, if. Okay. <coughs> so uh, that this is good enough to give you an idea. Abdurrahman, is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let's move move on to the second section. And uh, the second section, as I told you, it will be a monologue. Monologue means uh, a single speaker would be there. Okay. In an everyday social situation, again. the focus of this section is again like everyday social situation just okay. like section 1 but here there is only one speaker you may be required to listen for numbers just like your you know previous section here again your you know uh, uh, the questions would be based on some facts and figures you know i have already given a summary uh, of these details to you there some addresses prices names and so on for example okay. a speech about local facilities a talk about the arrangement of meals during a conference or something so uh, let's let's have a look on uh, one of these examples and then uh, you know uh, it will be more clear to you okay. let's say there is a librarian and uh, you know that librarian is introducing you maybe you have just joined a university maybe or Uh, a librarian is uh, you know uh, a senior librarian a head librarian is teaching or telling his junior staff about the layout of the library okay okay here you are given some options a to i and here is you know that's the layout of the library so there will be some discussion well once you enter the library on your right side right side there is a librarian's desk and then if you move on towards left there is something so you have to pick let's say it's it says that on the left side there is a meeting room or there is a reference book section okay so what you will do you will check this thing reference books and then you will put it here h h would be your answer okay fine so now let me play it and then you would see. you will hear the librarian of a new town library talking to a group of people who were visiting the library okay everyone so 
Here we are at the entrance to the town library. My name is Anne, and I'm the chief librarian here. And you'll usually find me at the desk just by the main entrance here. So, I'd like to tell you a bit about the way the library is organised and what you'll find where. And you should all have a plan in front of you. Well, as you see, my desk is just on your right as you go in. And opposite this, the first room on your left has an excellent collection of reference books and is also a place where people can read or study peacefully. Just beyond the librarian's desk on the right is a room where we have up-to-date periodicals such as newspapers and magazines. And this room also has a photocopier in case you want to copy any of the articles. If you carry straight on, you'll come into a large room and... Okay, I intentionally stop it. <coughs> but I hope uh, you've got the sense, you've made some sense out of it that uh, what yeah. it is all about uh, yeah. although i will cover it later um, uh, but for amjad <laughs> you know uh, this is especially for amjad because he already know these things <coughs> sorry okay. uh, if you have got a list of possible answers mm -hmm. and then uh, there are some questions here you know that generally speaking, you are given some time before the start of all the questions. They tell you that now you have half a minute to uh, look at question number 14 to, uh, sorry, 11 to 15. Okay? Before they start the recording, they give you a, all, almost half a minute to have a look on what these questions are. Okay. And then they start the recording. Mm -hmm. Fine? So, like, once they are done with this recording, then they would say, now you have some time to look at question number 16 to 20. Okay. Okay. And then you will, you know, have a look on it. And after 30 seconds, the recording will start. So this gives you a good idea about the question that you can expect. Otherwise, you know, directly, you just can't find the answers. That's, that's for sure. But during that, the, the time which is given to you, during that time, in this particular case, you know, these answers are not there. So shall you first look at the map in detail and all the questions, or you, shall, you should look at the options? This point is very important. In these kind of questions, you should read these options twice. Okay. Okay, why? We know that all the questions will come in sequence. In listening test, all the questions, answer to all the questions come in sequence. That means the speaker will talk about question number 11, this place first and then to this place. Okay. So, you know, during 30 seconds, what I can do, I should have a quick look two times at least on this list. Why? Because as soon as recording will start, then I can very really easily focus, okay, this is entrance, and you know, I can follow the talk and I can keep moving from one question to the other. Okay. You know, as soon as I'll find the answer to question number one, 11, then I'll jump to question number 12, so I can see it while listening. But now just imagine that uh, the, this, uh, the person who was talking or briefing uh, the staff or people about the library, he said that, okay, in, in this, in this room, we have got reference books. So if you would not read these options two times, you will not be able to look, search, find, look or search or find where these reference books are written. Okay. Fine. So, you know, let's say he or she says that here we have got reference books and you haven't seen this list. So what you would do, okay, okay, where is this reference book? Oh, yes, this is reference book. So you, by the time you would write H, the, <coughs> the speaker would already had, you know, crossed question number 12. Exactly. Fine. So for these kind of questions, whenever you have multiple options, it's advisable for you 
to read these options okay and if still you have time then you can jump here okay, okay we'll talk on this right now today it's just an introduction lesson and i just want to give you a feeling about listing test <coughs> in section 3 in section 3 there's a conversation up to four people as i said two three or four people uh, <coughs> in an <coughs> educational or training context I, I i told you that it is it will be an academic context for example a university tutor and a student discussing an assignment or a group of students planning a research project or a seminar so there will be some discussion right and uh, there were there will be some disagreements arguments and set of opinions here now <coughs> sorry in section 3 uh, let, first have a look on this now this is section 3 studying with the open university demanded a great deal of something that is motivation is the answer studying and working at same time improved this person's time management it was helpful that the course was structured in modules and she enjoyed meeting other students at summer schools so now this is a discussion between two students actually they are talking about uh, you know uh, their experience in an open university fine so now listen to it the other thing i wanted to ask you was did you find it hard studying with the open university you mean because you're studying on your own most of the time? Mm. Well, it took me a while to get used to it. I found I needed to maintain a high level of motivation because it's so different from school. There's no one saying, why haven't you written your assignment yet? And that sort of thing. Oh, dear. You'll learn it, Paul. Another thing was that I got very good at time management because I had to fit time for studying around a full-time job. Well, I'm hoping to change to working part-time, so... Okay, I hope that's clear. You've got an idea? Okay. So now, in section four, again, there will be only one speaker. That means it will be a monologue talk, and it, it might be a lecture or talk on a topic of journal academic interest. University lecture. For example, here, fill in the gaps using no more than three words. Ter tertiary education, a student is treated as so-and-so, Students have to be more independent and responsible for their own. So now just this is a tutor or this is an expert talking about uh, university education or tertiary education. I know. Right. So now just just listen to it. As you listen to the lecture, fill in the gaps numbered 31 to 35. Now you will hear the lecture. Well, I'd like to begin by saying how pleased I am that so many of you have come to the first of our study skills sessions this term. In the past, many students have said how much they have appreciated the classes. Why didn't they tell me that at school is one of the 